In our afternoon program, our first speaker is the scientific secretary and the main engine of this Wigner 111 symposia, my dear colleagues, Sándor Varro. I would like to ask him to say a couple of extra words containing his impression on Eugene Wigner. Please, Sándor. The, the, the slides are in Hungarian because uh, maybe two weeks, two weeks ago I had a, a seminar partly on, at my institute in Hungary and partly on the occasion of Wigner 111. And I emphasized uh, one uh, side of Wigner which uh, has not been at all considered in the conference. Please, page done. <laughs> the content of the talk was that I, I, I said a few words about Wigner, then I made the definition of the so-called quantum dissident, and then I analyzed the, the, Warren, the role of the Varenna school, whose main personality was Wigner, and played a crucial role in the so-called second quantum revolution. This uh, belongs to the summary where I just showed that, that uh, Wigner received his uh, Nobel Prize for a, a text in the official uh, Nobel Prize uh, committee that for his contribution to the theory of the atom, nucleus and elementary particles and particularly through the discovery and application of fundamental symmetry principles. Now page down please. And uh, so now I on purpose I uh, made this uh, uh, scan of the uh, first page of his Nobel uh, lecture, which says essentially that that uh, so if you have so if if you do physics say uh, you have the events which are the outcomes of experiments, then the events uh, serve as a sort of raw material for the laws. So the laws describe how the various events uh, depend on each other and have, uh, are connected. And beyond the laws, in the next level, you have the principles for which, uh, symmetries for which the nature, the laws of the nature serve as raw material. Now, uh, that's very interesting in thinking of uh, big data in a data center, where you handle an enormous amount of data, numerical and digital, whatsoever, and one would think that one could describe the nature in such a way that one wishes to get around the, the laws and they just immediately process the data of the measurements and without any laws just wants to do predictions. And uh, needless to say, without human mind it is not possible. Still, even with these big capacity computers. So one needs laws <coughs> and one needs mathematics. There were several books by Wigner which were translated. Uh, well, the structure of the nucleus, and then this is from the preface. Uh, we don't have time to discuss that. Then the, the uh, method of group theory and quantum mechanics. Interestingly, this word, group and pest, uh, was not said during the conference that time when this book appeared in, in a German, of course, and in the all the literature was German, and it was booming and becoming enormously uh, popular. The others said that, that there was this, this Gruppen pest, 
this word they they use use it that time and now let's go the, ah yeah ah, sorry 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 and this book i'm speaking of that book which i have with me also well this you know poster of the conference concerning the various sub disciplines in which uh, Wigner played a, a major role and he received Nobel Prize so he was embedded to the canonical science and the main subject and now uh, this this is this is this is the, that part which was not at all represented in the uh, conference and that's why uh, so you see this is quantum dissidence research on the foundation of quantum theory circa 1970 this was the time when the Clauser, the Bell, uh, C and so on they started their career essentially at least in interpretational uh, problems in quantum mechanics and there was a, a several nice analyses due to this uh, gentleman Olival Freire who writes very excellent uh, historical analysis, very thorough and I invited him in fact to talk about this subject but he uh, did not have time to come and since I was so much disappointed that, uh, that uh, he cannot come then I decided to uh, compile this lecture two weeks ago and give on in Hungarian to our colleagues in order that they, they know about these two. Now what is it? Uh, we studied the cases of C. Bell, Clauser, Shimonyi, Wigner, Rosenfeld, Espana, Celery, De Witt, except for Rosenfeld they were all dissidents fighting against the dominant attitude among physicists at the time according to which foundational issues had already been solved by the founding fathers of the discipline. So these guys, I mean Clauser, uh, Bell, uh, the other, the C, who introduced the concept of coherence they were almost suppressed. They were in danger in their concerning their career because at that time simply that was not fashionable, that was just mere a metaphysics. And now in between, uh, for instance, Aspe uh, showed experimentally uh, the bell uh, inequality, the violation, and there was an enormous technological development in between, which after all led to this so-called second quantum uh, revolution uh, with the quantum computer, decoherence, etc., etc. So I illustrated the role of Wigner, who was not a dissident, but uh, the greatest supporters of those young guys who were searching for new paths. Please. <clears throat> oh yeah, this is, this is a typical example for the suppression. For the suppression. Imagine, C is sitting, who is, who, who is, is the, the decoherence guy. Uh, now, uh, now it is in, in textbooks. Now, C, the young age, sitting in Heidelberg and compiling a paper on decoherence, which was a strange thing that time, and not belonging to the mainstream. And uh, then he asked Jensen, who was his uh, uh, director, that same Jensen, who received the Nobel Prize in 1963 with Wigner. Interestingly, that's, that's a funny thing. Ask Jensen about this paper. And the Jensen, Jensen told that there is a guy in Copenhagen, the old uh, Rosenfeld, who was the second uh, after Bohr. And uh, the rep mean representative of the Copenhagen interpretation. 
which said that the wave and particle description are completely disjunct from each other. And uh, <clears throat> then Rosenfeld wrote back to Jensen, I established the rule in my life never to step on anybody's toe. Toe is uh, the name of C because that just just C. So that that means that in German. From your institute that I have received makes me digress from that rule. I have all the reasons in the world to assume that such a concentrate of wildest nonsense is not being distributed around the world with your blessing and I think to be of service to you by directing your attention to this misfortune. You see, this was in the letter. And that means that essentially Tse was uh, without Wigner. Without Wigner, Tse would have been ended in nowhere. Schluss with them career. Uh, please. <clears throat> and this is just a walk, was, was the walker from the Star Wars, as you notice, because I associate it with stepping on a, a leaper machine or a step machine. Well, so, and this is just an illustration for that uh, Aspe, who, were, who was our speaker, uh, when he discussed with Bell the possible measuring the Bell inequality or the violation of the Bell inequality, uh, Bell asked him, uh, do you have a permanent position? Because if you don't, you may be kicked off because this is a completely immaterial, metaphysical thing, leads nowhere, so you will not get a single coin as support for your research, you see? So that's, that's very interesting. And Aspe uh, said that I have a permanent position, and this was in 1982. And he performed the experiment and measured first with this uh, polarization correlation the violation of the Bell inequality. So please go down because I don't know what. Uh, the, the, yeah, yeah. And then <clears throat> on Wigner, that was very important that he supported these young people, he was completely open to these, these uh, guys who were searching for uh, new possibilities. And a crucial role was played, please go down, this uh, uh, Warren School, uh, this is from the introduction by Espana was the director, and we are all convinced that a mere collection of wholly or partially successful recipes publish, uh, shut up and calculate. That was the, the mood that time. Shut up and calculate. Don't think of any epistemological or, or so to say metaphysical meaning. Recipes, be they uh, even beautifully formal, cannot be a substitute for a genuine understanding. Please go that. Uh, and uh, this is the first page of this Warren School, and Wigner was the uh, leading person. Uh, this, he was the first speaker, and as you see, the title is the subject of our discussion. And he went through all possibilities and, and analyzed, pre-analyzed, so to say, uh, those materials also which the others were giving. For instance, Bell was there, C. Uh, uh, España, uh, Yau, that's, that's interesting. Well, and many others. I don't, don't list that there. <coughs> Here, please go down. And this is, yeah, here, 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 is, here is Wigner. And uh, for instance, this is, this is Yau. I think somewhere, ah, yeah, this must be Bell. And I showed our, our friend Frank Elbondi, who was <laughs> taking part as an only Hungarian. Please, uh, yeah. And uh, I just mentioned that the, the uh, second speaker was Jauch in this uh, meeting after Wigner, and uh, he was discussing the wave particle duality 
and the experimental uh, proof of single photon interference. And I just highlighted that, that uh, Yau considered the Janoshi experiment as a crucial proof. So Janoshi verified two things. Photons arrive at the mirror position, three, four, statistically independently. That was a Hanbury, Brown and Twist type experiment. When you divide the beam by a half silver uh, beam splitter and you put two detectors, and if the intensity is very low, only one photon is at a time in the apparatus. So you have click either here or there. And you measure this and you measure the correlation. And the Hanbury Brown and Twist experiment showed that there is a positive correlation because of the boson character of the incoming photons. But this was the Janoshis was the first, and he made also the self-interference experiment, but we do not have time to discuss that. And, uh, <clears throat> well, this was certainly mentioned that uh, Wigner with Jordan uh, did the uh, second quantization for fermion fields, and as a closing, uh, a couple of sentences, so this I stop because this is a much bigger material. Uh, I have to mention also that Wig, without Wigner initiated and supported very much the uh, starting of the Foundations of Physics uh, journal. That exactly in 1970 were the first issue issued and uh, those so-called dissidents have a, in that journal at the beginning publication possibilities. Thank you very much for your attention. Before we would like, we would go further, please allow me, I would like to say also just a few things, or generally two. So one, uh, just you are here at the Wigner Research Center for Physics and uh, I would like to emphasize that when we choose the name of Wigner for this institute, uh, in our mind we had just write the same thing what uh, the symposium uh, radiated for you, that there is a man who was thinking about lots of different things and a man who has done lots of different things. On the other hand, uh, in the focus, it was the love of science and the successful accomplishment of scientific problems. So what we would like to show in this institute that excellent people with in, in excellent research groups, or maybe alone, so they are doing excellent science from many, many fields of physics, and my colleagues like physics, love physics, and this is why we are a Wigner Research Center. Another thought that I would like to share with you that when we were looking for, uh, into the literature, looking for sentences and ideas and, and uh, thinkings of Wigner, so one thing came into my mind, even glued into my mind. Already in 1950, Wigner, in, the, in his book or in his essay, about the limits of the science. He very clearly stated that the development of the science is already or will be reaching a limit where one people, the intellectual potential of one people is simply just not enough to, 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 to digest, to understand, to, to, to solve a problem and it is natural that experts will be come together, experts will form research groups and these research groups will solve the problem together and this is a challenge for the science that in such a time when individuals, excellent, genial individuals, how they can collaborate, how they can attack a problem from different direction and finally reach a solution which is really couldn't be born without the, if only one person wanted to solve it. And if you look around in these days, look at just the discovery of the Higgs boson, which was two times 3,000 people or even much more, or anything 
uh, which is going on on high energy physics, on astrophysics, on uh, medical science, so groups, research groups are working very inten intensively. So, and this is the message from our institute that this institute is the home of excellent research groups where excellent individuals are working together. So, uh, I don't want to waste more the time, so let me call our guest from the 12th district of the Budapest, Lajos Kovács, who is the uh, vice major of this district. That thank you very much for coming. And now he will speak in Hungarian, and my colleagues will 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 translate his messages. Please. And dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, I uh, would like to ask your understanding because speaking Hungarian is much easier for me in this time. So I need a little bit help. Thank you. So uh, Hungarian. <coughs> a 12. kerületben, ahol most vagyunk, eh, egy különös terület részes, hiszen maga a kerület azért nem egy erdő, és talán önöknek is meglepő, hogy itt van ez a gyönyörű kutatóközpont. A Visszagondolok rá, akkor körülbelül három esztendővel ezelőtt volt az első olyan találkozó, amit néhány kollégával, amikor erről az álomról, engem is mondjuk az, hogy bevontak ebbe az álomba, én magam kevéssé hittem benne. So the vice mayor himself uh, is uh, just after greeting you again said that although it's almost like a forest here, it is it's quite uh, actually the territory of the two of district. Um, and it was uh, nearly three years ago, the uh, first time that the idea, the vision uh, of, of, of this great facility uh, came up and he, at that time, was quite skeptic about it. És három évvel ezelőtt ez az állam, amikor megszületett, és főleg ide, erre a gyönyörű helyre, amely ugye már régóta a magyar tudomány, ha nem is fellegvára, de egy ritka terület része, hiszen itt van Magyarország második, még hogy picike is, de atomreaktora. And, and then three years ago, at first, this, this vision was born uh, at this uh, um, very important uh, bastion of Hungarian science uh, at the Hungarian Academy itself, which hosts uh, not only research institute, but also, although small, but still the second largest nuclear reactor in Hungary. Akkor úgy gondoltam, hogy ha ez egy jó helyszín bizonyára, hogyha, hogyha a tudós emberek így gondolják, és minden szkepticizmusom ellenére, és azt mondhatom, hogy a kerület vezetésének szintén a véleményét ezzel közvetítve, büszkén vállaltuk, és nagyon nagy örömmel segítettük ezt a munkát, hiszen mi más tehet egy városvezető, mint hogy büszke, büszke lehet arra, hogy egy olyan létesítmény, egy olyan tudományos központ jöjjön létre, amely Közép-Európa területén, ha megnézzük, akkor egyedülálló. Uh, he thought that in spite of his skepticism, uh, a scientist must definitely be right to choose this very special uh, environment uh, to make this vision, the Vigna Data Center, happen. And also he echoed the feelings of, of the district, uh, the community itself, to, to be happy to honor and host uh, such, a, such a European wide. Uh, Um, importantly great uh, research facility here. Mi ebben a kerületben mindig is büszkék voltunk a múltunkra, azokra a tudományos eredményekre, azokra a híres emberekre, akik példaképül szolgálhattak a városnak és a város minden polgárának. Uh, here uh, in the district uh, everybody uh, um, is proud and has been proud of their heritage, of the cultural heritage, of all the important scientists and other notable people that were born here and lived here and uh, contributed to our culture. Most, hogy Wigner Jenő eh, emlékére ez a konferencia itt létrejött, ez a büszkeség nem csak ő felé mutatkozik meg részünkről, hanem mindazon emberek felé is, akik lehetővé tették, kezdeményezték, a kivitelezésben részt vettek, és ma működtetik, hogy ez a kutatóközpont 
ezt a hírnevet tovább vigye, és a jövő évtizedekben még inkább öregvítse. And, and right now, at this great event, uh, this Wigner Symposium, we're not only proud of Wigner himself, but also of the work, of the successful hard work of all the people that contributed to the success of this project and made this happen. Ennek, hogy nyomot is hagyjunk az intézet kérésére, szer fölött támogatjuk azt a kérést, hogy az intézet előtt található közteret Wigner, Jenő, Wigner Jenőről nevezzük el, Azonban ez a, az avató ünnepség azért egy picit e, talán félre sikeredete lesz, de ez nem a kerületi önkormányzat, nem a, az intézet, nem valamely e, gonosz intézkedésnek az eredménye, hanem 2014-ben Magyarországon választások lesznek. Ennek eredményeképpen a jövő év végéig közterületet átnevezni, átszámozni nem lehet, ezért most csak egy jelképes avatásra van lehetőségünk. And to make, to make his day, to make uh, Wigner's celebration even more memorable, uh, the district uh, uh, itself, uh, with the full support of this idea, helps us to uh, start the process of actually naming the square in front of the Institute campus, Wigner Square. And uh, although this might seem uh, a little bit um, funny now, we cannot actually make the renaming of this, uh, if this square at this point, since we will have uh, elections uh, in 2014 next year and for obvious political reasons um, all such uh, renamings uh, procedures have been uh, have been halted uh, at the moment so what we can do now is basically just starting uh, our own uh, preparations and some kind of memorial thing to to start this procedure of the renaming Bízom benne, hogy jól érezték magukat itt Magyarországon, és én köszönöm, hogy ellátogattak a hegyvidékre, a kutatóközpontba, és szívesen látjuk önöket bármikor máskor a jövőben, látogassanak el hozzánk. Köszönöm. To support our scientific activities and contribute to the scientific success and, and all over cultural success of the district as well. Thank you very much. Ezt a teret elnevezni, ezt a teret megújítani, és itt most a közös beszélgetés során intézményvezető úrral még az is felmerült bennünk, hogy bizony bizony egy szobor milyen szépen ékesíteni itt a teret. Én bízom benne, hogy közös erőfeszítéssel, külső forrás mobilizálásával itt másfél-két év múlva egy szobor is itt fog díszelegni, és azt hiszem az egy méltó megkoronázása lesz nem csak az eseménynek, a térelnevezésnek, hanem az egész komplexumnak. Én köszönöm szépen még egyszer, hogy eljöttek, és köszönöm szépen nektek ezt a közös gondolkodást, együttmunkálkodást, és örülünk, hogy segíthettünk. Örülök. Köszönöm szépen. Közös az öröm. Uh, we are also very grateful to the local major office to accept our suggestion and to work together to reach the status that this square around us will get a name, especially the name of Eugen, Eugene Wigner or Wigner Jenő in Hungarian. So I think now this is the preliminary inauguration of the, <laughs> of the square. So. So I appreciate all of you.